I decided to do uh, a contemporary Christian uh, CD because a little bit of uh, frustration with uh, the genre of music I've spent a career uh, making, um, but more um, on an inspir inspired level of wanting to uh, profess uh, my faith and um, my passion uh, to witness to my Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. It, it was uh, going to be a specific challenge because I had never uh, tried writing lyrics before. And that was going to be something that was um, I was entering into with a little bit of trepidation. The idea of writing lyrics with maybe judging eyes on those lyrics um, or judgmental uh, feelings towards those lyrics. But one of the cool things that happened was in this journey of sobriety for me, uh, I made a commitment to myself that I would uh, read uh, the Word of God uh, from cover to cover um, yearly. And since I started this journey uh, in sobriety uh, about nine and a half years ago, um, I have been able to keep that promise. And one of the cool things that happened with that was, is that I was hoping I would be one of those guys that could, um, you know, quote scripture here and there and, and have the scripture and the, you know, the, the book, the, the chapter and the verse. And to some extent, there are some of those that are so memorable that I can do that. Uh, but the good thing was, is that getting saturated with the living Word of God and with the, the grace and love of Jesus, what's happened is I was able to draw on that inspiration and sometimes when I was working on those lyrics, those scriptures would just come back uh, to me from different places. Well, I chose the name uh, Through All Generations for this CD because uh, it was a title actually uh, given to me um, by the Lord. And I had uh, read two verses that stood out to me. And one of them was Psalm uh, 100. And the very last sentence of Psalm 100 is, um, is affirming his faithfulness through all generations. And the very same thing happened in uh, a verse in Ephesians, uh, it's the prayer of affirmation by uh, St. Paul, Ephesians 3, 14 through 17. And it also said, through all generations. Many times when I'm reading uh, the living word of God, something will jump off the page that hasn't jumped off the page before. And many times if it happens once or twice, three times, there's something about three times that affirms it to me as being something directed to me by the Lord. I think that's one of the cool things about scripture in why the Bible is the living word of God, is it speaks to you in ways not just written in the words on that, in those chapters, it speaks to you personally to the heart and soul. And you can trust that what you read out of there, and if you give it a moment and pray about it, it will be affirmed as the living word of God. And my relationship with Jesus is that of a person who has looked at me at my worst, seen me at my darkest hour, and looked at me with love in his eyes to say, I'm with you. I will never leave you or forsake you, but I want for you what I've seen in you, not the dark, but the good. And I want you to do it my way. Jesus is a, a constant companion for me. Jesus is the person that is there with me at all times, night and day. Uh, I Promised is a song that came out of a song. Uh, 
um, there was a song called My Promise that was uh, on our Jubilee CD uh, released back in 1991. And that song was an instrumental song, but the title had to do with a promise that I had made in prayer to my Lord. And it's kind of a, a, a funny promise. I, I promised that I would live a life according to what I thought He would want me to live, a godly life, um, a faithful life, a trusting life, if only He would get us on the billboard chart. Now we had a we had a CD that was doing, it was our second CD out and things were going well for, for Dot Zero at the time. And it was kind of a surprise to us because, well, we, we were striving for these goals, but we were flabbergasted that, that they were coming true. We actually had uh, this CD, Jubilee, was number one on r and uh, uh, radio charts for um, five consecutive weeks and it was doing great things but I wanted to get on that billboard chart and I wanted it was a billboard sales chart so I prayed for that and, and I promised that I would make I would make that commitment um, or sacrifice it so I thought and lo and behold uh, the Lord kept his promise he brought that about we made that billboard chart and what did I go out and do? I went out and I celebrated by doing everything I said I would not do. And the idea of that was so heartbreaking and shameful to me after the fact that it haunted me for years. So this song, I promised, was a bit of a cleansing, if you will, uh, a, a, a cleansing that I needed to have take place. So in the first part of the song, I talk about the promise that I didn't keep to my Lord and Savior Jesus, and the promise that He did keep. And then in the second part of the song, I use the same lyric format, and then it tells about getting a chance to do over, or to do it differently, now that I'm sober, and now that I am striving all in to live a godly life according to what his commands are. And that's why I mention that in the two scriptures. Lost and Found is a, a song that is very uh, dear to me. It's one of the ones that was the first to come about on this CD. Uh, the title of it is borrowed from the, the famous song Amazing Grace. I was lost uh, and now found. I was uh, blind, but now I can see. It talks about the idea of having been in that dark place, that place that is no hope, uh, a place of self-loathing that is beyond description, a place where in my alcoholism, we described this in the rooms of support, where I had made such a mess of my life and was going down a path of destruction. I couldn't imagine life with alcohol or without alcohol. And that brought up a very dark question. Well, then what is left? Lost and found, the key word is found. And I was found again looking over my shoulder, seeing my Savior looking at me with unconditional love. And that's all it needed, I needed, to make that start. Forever Faithful, that to me really says it all. It's simple, and yet we have a saying in the support rooms, uh, keep it simple. Simple is, is the way. Um, we also have a saying, I've heard it in, in many different uh, occasions, that it's called the KISS method. Uh, keep it simple, stupid. Um, but we change it to be a little bit more friendly. Keep it simple, sweetheart. I think works a little bit better. And in my, in my uh, passion for helping people, 
that's what it ought to be. But forever faithful is simple because we can count on our Lord, our Heavenly Father. Just think of that term, Heavenly Father, Abba. It's like Daddy. It's looking at your Father, someone who you can trust through thick and thin, who is always forever faithful. Well, that's what our Heavenly Father is and Jesus Christ for me as my personal risen living Lord and Savior with the Holy Spirit. One God Almighty forever and ever. I know that there is nothing and will be nothing that can ever keep me from the love of my Heavenly Father and my personal Savior Jesus. They are and always will be forever faithful. Uh, to say right off the top is that uh, in order to break any kind of an, addic an addiction and get into recovery, um, the best thing to do is complete honesty and to talk about just what the problem is up front and to deal with it on a, on a very face-to-face -face basis. You know, I, I started drinking early in life. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to be a rock star. I mean, it's simple as that. I mean. Uh, sex, drugs, rock and roll, let's do this, you know, for the party, you know, we were partying. Um, but then, you know, uh, life, uh, responsible life becomes a part of uh, the equation and I wanted to be a good father, I wanted to be a good husband and uh, I'm not sure I was either. I have a passion for helping people that are struggling with addiction uh, because uh, I have found a freedom from addiction. I have found uh, the obsession has been lifted because of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But with that, I also have been given uh, an unbelievable gift, but also a responsibility and duty uh, to help uh, the struggling uh, addict or alcoholic. Uh, I can speak their language, but one of the things that, that I always say is, man, I wish this on you. This feeling of, of sobriety and, and this feeling of being free and, and having life uh, be joyously new and um, full of uh, adventure, um, optimism, um, anything goes. And anything is possible now uh, with sobriety. And the thing about it is, is anybody can find that moment of clarity and begin that road of recovery if they want it. They just have to leave that denial behind and start the journey with somebody that's been there before that can help them and can relate to them. Many times the, the only thing that's holding somebody back from finding that recovery is a sense of denial, a sense of either that there is a problem or a sense of the fact that they can find the solution to the problem. Once you are able to be honest with yourself and honest with another human being, maybe another alcoholic or another addict and be honest with God and Jesus, then you've already begun the journey. And it is my uh, great joy to help people who are seeking recovery because if I know that they want the solution, they've already gotten over the hardest hurdle and they're on their way. I love the story of the prodigal son in uh, the book, uh, the Gospel of Luke. Uh, it talks about uh, a young man that um, had all privileges and had everything pretty much handed to him, uh, was, was in want of nothing or in need of nothing, uh, a family and father who loved him and provided for him, and yet that wasn't enough. For the, for the prodigal son, the, 
prodigal son asked his father for his inheritance early and he went off to distant lands and squandered it on uh, fast living, on, uh, on, on sin, on sinful things that were to pleasure seeking, um, things of the flesh, uh, things to gratify the sinful nature. When that ran out, as that normally does, and need became, began to set in, he realized that he had nowhere to turn because the world was cold, the world was broken, and there was nobody that would care for him or feel sorry for him. It was just a dark, cold place with no hope. And so he thought, there's one thing I can do. I can go back to my father. I'm too embarrassed to ask to become and be treated as his son again, but I could ask to be like one of the hired hands and maybe he would have mercy on me and let me be as a worker. Well, that's the first step. The first step is saying, well, I can go back. I have to humble myself first. Admit my fault, admit my sin, admit the place that I'm in, but to look back. And the, the prodigal son, when he looked back, and he started back on that journey, and he met up with his father, he not only saw that his father was overjoyed that he was back, but welcomed him in as, as his long lost son that he thought was dead. He, he butchered the, the fatted calf and, and, had, and threw a, a, a royal feast and a party to celebrate that his son was back, not that he was just back to be a servant. This was something that, that overwhelmed him and the amount of love, forgiveness, mercy, the amount of grace that his father showed him. This is what I feel has been given me by Jesus. I look back over my shoulder after being at the lowest point of my life. And if I hadn't made this decision, I promise you that I'd be dead today. I wouldn't have seen the birth of my grandson, Justice. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to record this music that will glorify and praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus. But when I look back over my shoulder, it wasn't Jesus sitting there looking at me saying, okay, you tried it your way, why don't you try it mine? No. What I felt and what I do feel every day is looking back over my shoulder and seeing Jesus running towards me with open arms saying, come back. I'm ready to have you back. And that to me melted my heart of stone and brought me to the place to where I will be able to praise and worship him with song and with my words and with my heart and soul every day.